Hi everyone, and welcome back. We're back for the full moon in Pisces. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy moon. <laughs> crazy full moon this time. Uh, not just because it's Pisces. I mean, Pisces full moons are always intense because it's, well, it's Pisces. Right, right. It's the most psychic. It's ruled by Neptune. Um, the moon's in the 10th house. The sun is in the 4th house. There's also a grand trine. There's also a diamond tip on the grand trine. The moon is the tip of the diamond mm -hmm. portion. And the sun is the base of the trine. It's, this is going to be intense. We have Uranus in Taurus as trining the sun and sextiling the moon. We have Pluto. That's trining the sun and sextiling the moon, <laughs> creating the grand trine and the diamond tip. So this is going to be intense. People that you know are going to need to do this meditation. We are focusing the meditation on the equal house system, which means we're bringing that energy in with, to a, an equal house system. Because Coke and Placidus have interceptions, and what they're intercepting is the 12th house, which rules Pisces, which is not the house you want intercepted during this thing. We, it's also intercepting the 6th house, and the 6th house is Scorpio. Right. So we don't want to, and, and you don't want a water sign mm. interception when you're doing a water full moon. <laughs> it's just not the right thing to do. So that's why it's so important for people to do this. Mm. All right. Otherwise, you are going to be essentially inhibiting the energy of the trines, the energy of the sextiles, tapping the moon and the sun, and it's going to throw the entire energy of this full moon off. And that's not what we want. Right, right. Okay. What we want and what we're going to have is we've got Uranus in the 12th house, Taurus. We've got Pluto in the 8th house in Capricorn. We have the sun in the 4th house in Virgo. And that's our Earth trine. That's the Grand Trine and Earth sign. So it's a true grand trine. True grand trine. This time. Wow. Yep. And the moon creates the diamond tip because it's sextiling both Uranus and Pluto. It's in Pisces. It's in the 10th house. It is conjunct Neptune, which rules Pisces. Another reason right, you don't right. want an interception is because the 12th house is Pisces, and if Pisces' house is intercepted, it's going to throw another chink into the armor right. and cause some serious issues. So again, if you other people that you know, share this with them and get them to do this meditation for their own benefit. Absolutely. It's going to be unbelievably important. Yes, it is. We have a semi-sextile to Venus. Also, we have a square to Jupiter. Okay. And we have a semi-square to the midheaven, okay, which is actually in the ninth house in Aquarius. Okay. Okay. Interestingly enough. Right. So, the houses themselves. The deal with the fourth house. So, the fourth house, the base being in the fourth house. The fourth house is your, I mean, it, it is your foundation when you go home. The way you feel when you're home, no matter where your home is. Mm -hmm. okay? It's where you reside. It's your, I mean, think, think about when you were a kid. Your porch was safe. <laughs> if right, you were right. being chased by anybody, as soon as you got to your porch, you were safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay? okay? If you had a bad day at school and you came home, you, or a bad day at work, you get home. As soon as you walk in the door and shut it, you feel much better. You feel a little sense of relief or a huge sense of relief. It's over. It's not as prevalent as it was when I was a child because there was no social media. Mm. So when you got home, you got home. You were disconnected from everything. Right, right. And even TV, there was no social aspect to television. Mm -hmm. 
usually people my age use it as an escape when we got home cartoons or whatever <laughs> right right and did what we were going to do well but again older... but having the base the sun in the fourth house is having your base in your safety zone that's the important part of again of this trying right it adds another layer to the sun because the sun is your center mm -hmm. and that's your core it's your essence what you radiate out so it's unbelievably important to have it there uranus in the 12th house even though it's in taurus it's in the house of pisces it's a very spiritual house which gives an idea of where, it's, where part of where this trine is going to go because again uranus is it, it's awakening right and awareness uranus wants so being in the 12th house it's going to be a spiritual awakening at least through our meditation right the 12th house does have some negative connotations to it that you don't want mm -hmm. sickness illness mental issues you don't want that uh, and even spiritually you can connect you to dark spiritual things which you don't want either you don't want to wake into it to that kind of thing all right eighth house the house of scorpio even though it's in capricorn the house itself is scorpio's house endings it's mysticism so again it's you've got that connection that spiritual mystical connection now so now you've got a magical aspect to it that's what mystical does to spiritual okay okay, okay. it creates more of a magical base to it or a magical connection and it's a trying so it's going to do it real easy yeah the energy is going to flow real yep, super real easy. nice real easy it's going to be comfortable it's going to flow nice there's not going to be any problems it's going to be harmonious um and it's pluto and Pluto is retrograde, and Uranus is retrograde. So right, right. this is all inner. So it's an inner spiritual awakening in the 12th house. It's an inner spiritual rebirthing process, elimination process, because Pluto also does that. It destroys and then rebuilds. Right. Where Uranus comes in and starts the destruction because it pulls the rug out from underneath your feet and goes, okay. I was trying to awaken you to something and you ignored me. So <laughs> you're awake now. Yeah. It's still happening. Mm -hmm. You never want to ignore Uranus. That's a big thing about Uranus. Sextiling the moon. We're talking mental stimulation. Okay. That's what sextiles do. They're air. Communication, interaction. Okay. With Pisces. Pisces is unbelievably psychic and empathic. And uh, with the, and with the moon there, yeah. your and then with the moon there, base, yeah. your emotional base. Yeah, we've got deep, deep empathic abilities going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to be absorbing a lot of stuff. Okay, and that releasement's going to get bolstered through that. Pluto will help with the elimination of that releasement also because it does have that connection there. Mm -hmm. The releasement, yes, is from the moon essentially to the sun. However, because of the trine connections and everything being connected together, all of the other planets that are involved in this are going to magnify the moon energies. Not what's being released, but how you're releasing it and helping eliminate that essentially mm -hmm. because of Pluto is unreal. And it's in Capricorn, so it's going to be an organized, ordered release. Right. And it's going to be a process that you that, that you go through and it's going to start with elimination it's going to start with rebirthing then it's going to move mm -hmm. okay because that's the function of it because it's in capricorn and right, it's right. going to move to taurus it's going to move to uranus and uranus is the structure of it and so the awakening is going to be your structure spiritual value structure is essentially what's going to end up happening Okay, all connecting down to the base in your home. Wow. Okay, and your essence and your core and what you're radiating out. Okay. Your essentially your self identity and your social identity mm -hmm. in the house of the moon. Right, right. Which it's in opposition to. Um, um, yeah, like I, I mean, the connections are, are crazy on this one, but it's great. Because again, 
positive aspects coming into awareness and then acting on it, that's what's happening. Right. Yeah. Yep. And the moon is seeing its own home. It's not in it. It's seeing it as an opposition, which is incredible. So all of this energy is funneling together. And that's, again, that's why it is so important. This particular full moon is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about, there's a partial eclipse, but it's so minute, it's not really going to have an impact because it's, what what was it, 6 or to 8%? 8% coverage. Yeah, that's, that's really not enough to have any it's, much it's, of an impact at all. It's not going to impact the energies no. or for how long they last. a quarter or more, yes, but yeah. 8%, no. I mean, and that's at its, its fullest. Right, right. So, no. So, you know, that's not even going to be a part of the meditation. Um, now, we do have a semi-sextile to Venus. We have a square to Jupiter. And we have a semi-square to the midheaven going on. Okay? Midheaven. This is your advancement. Okay? That's how you advance. Where you want to go. What you want to do. Okay? We're in the ninth house. Higher education, learning, philosophies, theories, truth seeking. Okay, okay. Because it's ruled by Sag. Yep, yeah. <laughs> and Sag wants that truth. Conceptual understanding, yeah. Yep. Conceptuality, three dimensional. Okay. And, um, but it, it's also a fire. Right. So it should be fun at the same time. It's not like reading a textbook that you hate, it's like reading. Something in school you love. Right, right. And having enjoyment out of it and getting excited about it when other people who aren't excited about what you're excited about go, that doesn't really sound all that exciting. <laughs> well, and it, it, but when you're in the ninth house, when you're excited, it doesn't matter what they think. Right, right. You know, and there are well, times where the, you can get other people excited about the fact that you're excited about it. The other part good. with that aspect, you know, is that with Sag being mutable fire. Mm -hmm. It's that spiritual expression again, tied to the spiritual spirituality right. of this moon. Yeah, it ties into it. Yeah, it does. Um, not to mention it's squaring Jupiter, mm -hmm. which rules the ninth house. Right. So a lot of energy, but there's going to be there's going to be breakthroughs. Um, the energy is going to be determined. I mean, it's going to be potent. It's going to be powerful. Right. Right. You know that need for advancement, um, and again, that's a semi square. Or yeah, that's a semi square. Okay, so I mean, there's a lot of good things that are going to be coming into this, moon. and that's why it's so important for people to understand it. And for the people who don't do this, you're going to see some strange things coming out of people. Right, right. You're going to see people that dis that are disconnected spiritually that don't feel it. You're going to get people that go victim. Because that's the negative aspect of Pisces. And instead of doing a nice releasement of that energy, they're not going to do it because most people think during a full moon, or I shouldn't say think, but they uh, subconsciously direct the energy not into a releasement, but a pulling. And when they're pulling in, then what they end up pulling in are the negative aspects of the, of the sign. Mm -hmm. The opposition, things they don't like, and they see it in other people because that's how oppositions work. Right, right. So they're going to see all these negative aspects about themselves that they don't like in other people, and it's going to be magnified in them to the point where other people will be like, I don't understand why anybody would even get as upset as you are about this. Right. Because this person is doing this. It doesn't make any sense. And the reason is because you don't like the fact that you do it, mm -hmm. and it magnifies all of that. Because the problem you have is with yourself, and it's not the other person. But that's how it's going to come out. So that's something to be careful about and, and look for in other people. Right. Absolutely. Okay. And with the interceptions being, again, that, um, that 12th house, that Uranus, that awareness, okay, it doesn't stop the energy. It doesn't allow the energy to express correctly. And anytime you have that, tends to be in a negative way. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the negative aspects of Pisces are 
neurotic. It can be insanity to a certain degree. Okay? People not making any sense. And unfortunately for Uranus being in there, Uranus is how you're, you're unique, how you don't care what other people think and it's about what you think. That can cause some serious issues here. Mm -hmm. It can also cause you to go into, in, into a weird escape and delusion because the Neptune influence right. with Pisces. And Neptune is about delusional. It's yeah. escape. Chaos. Yep, chaos, escape, delusions. You can have some really weird dreams, very nasty, strange dreams, and it's going to be internal. Right. And again, that's where you can dive in, get into that uh, the aspects of like mental illness and yeah, depression, depression, things yeah. of that nature, alienation, isolation, all of those things. So that's why again, it's so important to do this because you want that Taurus energy coming. Mm -hmm. That base, that strength. Right. Because Taurus is structure, your value and system. You, and you want it to flow freely. Yeah. And the problem is, though, if it's intercepted, you're, so your value system, so is your value system. Right. And that can really screw things up for you <laughs> when you start second guessing your own value system. Right, right. Because then your confidence is gone, your own security is gone, because that's where we get our security from. Mm hmm. How strong we are in our own values. And then training that into your son, into your home, can cause unbelievable problems inside the home. If you and the other people, you don't feel secure in your home, you don't feel safe in your, in your home, you don't feel that safety net when you walk in, you don't feel that, that intimacy when you walk into it. Mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not talking about intimacy between people that are dating, I'm talking about that intimacy, intimacy that you feel with close, close family. Right. That you may live with, that, that you live with. That kind of an intimate feeling. And that in itself can further cause more isolation. Because when you don't feel it, you pull it in. And you stop interacting with people and you stop talking to people and you stop working with people. Well that's uh that's, and that's not what you want. A lot of uh people that I've interacted with that have not been grounded properly. Mm -hmm. That's how they act. Yeah, a lot of them do. Okay. And what you have to do, though, after you do the meditation, and you understand how other people might act, you need to take that stuff with a grain of salt. Just let just us brush it yeah, off just because let it slide right off. they're acting out the energies that that are coming in. Mm -hmm. It's not personal to you. And again, with Scorpio as the other end of the. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Scorpio, the negative aspects of Scorpio are, can be horrible. The positive aspects are unbelievably wonderful, but the negative aspects can be unbelievably horrid. And that's going to, that, that, that can be a problem. Right, they can be right. very vindictive. Oh, yeah. And hold a grudge. Hold resentments. Ooh. Things that you don't think about anymore are going to mm -hmm. come up with people and like, I thought we worked through all this. Blah, blah, blah. But Scorpio has a tendency to bring all that all that stuff back up. Okay, it can also again for the isolation pull you inward because it's so secretive at times. Right. I've known a few Scorpio people had Scorpio in the fourth house. Nobody had ever been to their house except for like three or four people, and half their friends didn't know where they lived. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't anything that they consciously did. No, I just don't. No, no, that's that. It's just that. I don't talk about my that. Yeah, it's just that that secretive. Yeah. Side. And with the sixth house, that's work, labor. Mm -hmm. It's not your career, but it's work, labor. So when you're working, okay, not where you're involved in your career, where you want to go, those kind of things, but the actual work that you do, that's where that's going to play out. So when you're at work, people may start acting a little nasty. Yeah. They may get real touchy, real moody. Okay. Uh, and possibly cruel because Scorpio goes cruel at times. That it does, yes. Uh, again, it can yeah. go very cruel. Mm -hmm. So again, reason to do this. Okay. Reason to do the meditation for the equal house system and as many people as you can get so that the people around you are bringing the energy in right and they're and they're releasing what they need to release. Right. 
Okay, because the releasement itself. And then once the release was done, we do pull in some of the positive aspects of, um, of, of Pisces. Right. Because that will work well with the Virgo new moon. Mm -hmm. The problem is the negative aspects of Pisces and Virgo hit like a brick wall against each other. And they don't get along, which is why you need to do the release. Mm -hmm. Or else all that energy you brought in from the new moon is meaningless. Right. Okay. It's also why hospitals fill up. It's also why jails fill up. Okay. All sorts of weird things happen on full moons. You don't believe me? And you know a cop? Ask the cop. They'll tell you. Cops oh, yeah. The stores that's... and they're like, oh, it's a full moon? Oh, come on. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, it's going to be the, a weird the night. Day of and the couple days leading up to it, they, yep. they absolutely... Eight. Yeah, because things go really strange. People act out mm -hmm. all of this energy, and they're the ones that have to respond to it. Right, right. That's the thing. So anyway, that's what you need to look out for this moon. Okay, That's what we need to do. And um, we'll talk a little bit after the meditation. Yep. And we're going to get ready now to yep. go into the meditation. Mm -hmm. Um. While we're doing the meditation, we're going to turn the camera off and we'll be putting the chart up so that you guys will have a chance to see the chart yourself. Um, but also focus on the meditation. Let this energy release and then come back right. into you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you after the meditation. Definitely. All right. So to begin the meditation... I would like you to sit comfortably with your feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes and begin to relax. Take a deep breath in. Hold. And release. Take another deep breath in. Hold. And release. Take one final deep breath in. Hold. And release. Begin a normal breathing rhythm now. And visualize a mist enveloping your body. Inhale this mist into your lungs and allow it to saturate into your bloodstream. A scene begins to take shape in your mind's eye and you find yourself standing in an open field. The night sky above you is filled with stars and a beautiful, bright, Full moon. You notice an indigo beam tracing its way down to you from the moon. The energy of this light beam impacts you on your forehead. In between and just above your eyes. Allow this energy to open the aperture of your third eye and saturate your brow chakra, seeding your pineal gland. The energy now is going to move down to your solar plexus chakra, where it saturates your pancreas and has a yellow color. Traveling once more, this energy moves to your sacral chakra, where it seeds your sexual organs and takes on an orange coloration.
you feel the energy of this beam now reverse direction flowing from you to the moon and alongside you you feel a strong masculine presence this is Sandalfon and he will aid you in releasing the negative aspects that we have already talked about. The energy you are releasing is compulsive, obsessive, fearful, moody, cruel, manipulative, depressive, submissive, full of malice, smothering, hypnotic, vicious, insane, and sadistic. The next wave of energy you are releasing is purposeless, indecisive, finicky, undirected, hypersensitive, paranoid, full of self-pity and victimization. This release is focused through moodiness, compulsion, worry, confusion, delusion, chaos, and escapism. The release of this energy will optimize your functional organization help repair your reputation and help promote your status. This allows you to positively assert your dominance and authority in your career, which will help bolster your reputation with your colleagues and clientele. Take a few moments now and sit in this release as the energy flows from you to the moon. Once again, you notice the direction of the energy flow now changes coming back into you. And with you now is a loving, motherly present. This is the Shekinah. And she will aid you in bringing in the positive aspects of this Pisces moon. The energy coming in will travel up to your crown chakra where it seeds your pituitary gland and has a violet color. The energy then travels down to your heart chakra, saturating your hypothalamus with a green color. Traveling down yet again to your solar plexus once more. Refilling your pancreas and having a yellow hue. On the move once again, the energy then goes to your hand chakra right around your navel. Where it fills your heart muscle and takes on an amber color.
One more move. The energy travels to your sacral chakra. Saturating your sexual organs and having an orange coloration. And lastly, moving down to your foot chakra, filling your parathyroid and taking on a brown hue. You will now be coming to an awareness and acting on this energy for emotional balance. And the energy is calm, resourceful, protective, secretive, emotional, compassionate, subconscious, empathic, spiritual, reflective, and receptive. The next wave of energy coming in is psychic, refractive, mystic, sensual, adaptable, flexible, and changeable. All of this energy is sympathetic, unselfish, imaginative, humble, vulnerable, humorous, and interested in everyone around it. This will all be pulled through sensitivity, empathy, emotion, and it will be incredibly psychic. You will be full of mystery, vision, fantasy, transcendence, spiritual wisdom, and magic. You will now be able to make adjustments for the sharing and exchanging of energy with others to modify your negative attitudes pertaining to lust, indulgence, laziness, and indifference through charm, grace, diplomacy, and cooperation with others. This will strengthen your core identity through liberated creative expression or faith enhancement. You will now have a concentrated drive to disavow any and all peer pressures and your fears of failure giving you the ability to streamline a magical current of spiritually informed insight for the destiny of your choosing or fate fulfillment. This is accessed through curiosity, inventiveness, and mental agility. This will play out through your personal development, your appearance, and your ability to assert your personal expression, allowing you greater independence to again assert your personal views. All of this energy is founded on the grand trine with a diamond tip. It will begin by nurturing the mood of your psyche through reactive and subconscious responses to mental stimulation. 
first through rebirth, integration, and improvement of your principles for renewed function through potency, fellowship, and endings. This will allow you to easily eliminate the unnecessary, allowing new perspectives and abilities previously undiscovered to awaken new foundations of structure and perceptions for change. This will deepen your ability for visualization and increase your devotion through your subconscious and through dreams for the spiritual completion of existing relationships. This will center your purpose through principle and character, cultivating an interactive force of presence, expressing your true magical nature for the transformation of your personal foundations, for the advancement of conceptual cognitions and ethereal impressions. Take a few moments now and allow all of this energy to sink in. You notice that the beam from the moon is beginning to fade and the aperture of your third eye is now closed. Seal your chakra circuit and allow the energy to begin to travel beginning at the top at your crown chakra down the front of your body, through each of your chakras, out into the endocrine glands, all the way down to your foot chakra, cycling back up along your spine, out through the nerve plexuses, and back to the crown. Take a few moments and allow this energy to continue to cycle. It is now time to begin coming back to this reality. Take a deep breath in, hold and release. Take another deep breath in, hold, and release. Take one final deep breath in, hold, and release. Begin a normal breathing rhythm, and exhale the mist from your lungs. Begin to come back to an awareness of where you are sitting. You can begin wiggling your fingers and your toes. And when you are ready, you may open your eyes. All right, welcome back. All right, I enjoyed that. <laughs> As you, I, I, you probably could hear me breathing, but uh, I did that meditation while you were are you doing? I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that meditation. I feel very relaxed, energized right now. I can feel the releasement happening. That was nice. Um, Excellent. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, again, I can only, as I said before, get as many people to do this as you can. Because the negative aspects of this particular full moon can be 
detrimental. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Even if their kids try to get them to do as much as they can. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. In it, share it with them, go outside, feel it at night, mm -hmm. feel the energy, look at the moon, connect to her, and just let it let it come in and let it flow out. Yeah, that was a nice, very nice meditation. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that absolutely. Nice. Nicely done. It's always a pleasure to do them. So, yeah. well, thank you for joining us. Uh, and we do look forward to seeing you next time. Do remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.